Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first present myself succinctly. So, I'm Yabadan Jafar. I'm a PhD student, theoretical physics student. Uh, I'm dealing with um, the topic that uh, you can see here molecular dynamic simulation of structural evolution in crystals and amorphous alloys under ultrafast laser irradiation. This topic is done at the supervision of Professor Jean Philippe Colombier and Professor Florence Carilli, with two other um, uh, collaborators from Misa Lyon, Dr. Fisco, and Dr. Amodio. Well, uh, to share with you some results that we have obtained a couple of weeks ago, I, 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 I present the following outline. So, we start with the main purpose of the study, brief history, simulation tools, skin, theoretical background, simulation setup, and then we'll talk about the harvest subject phantosecond laser interaction with copper in its crystal and amorphous state, and we'll finish with some conclusion. Well, um, uh, so scientifically strictly speaking, the main purpose of this project is just to answer the following question, the following question, can we induce a phase transformation using phantosecond laser in copper zirconium alloy system in its crystal and amorphous state? Well, uh, just for the record, uh, molecular dynamics started in the 80s with the first Monte Carlo simulation, but the concrete implementation of this method uh, was done by Raman by simulating what we call Leonard Jones gas in 60s. Well, uh, there is a very important thing to put in your head. If you are planning to use molecular dynamics, you have, you have, you have, you have to know that we are dealing with objects of few nanometers, okay, and phenomenon occurring at some nanoseconds. Nanoseconds, okay? Well, without any surprise, to manage our investigation, we use what we call LAMPS, which is just the acronym of Large Scale Atomic Mole uh, Molecular Massively Parallel Simulator developed by Sandia Laboratory. Well, uh, I put here the website, the uh, official website. So if you want the doc and exhaustive um, documentation, you can take a tour there. But if you want also deeper, deeper information and to see how the software is working, I advise you to take a tour to this Stephen Plimpton uh, article uh, published in 1995. So uh, this 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 package can be set in different platforms: Unix, uh, Windows, and Mac OS. What makes this software really powerful uh, is that he, you can you can really predict the experimental results. Well, uh, concretely speaking, uh, this software will just solve what we call Newton equation using what we call uh, Verde algorithm. Okay, so the, the, to, to manage any molecular dynamic simulation, just briefly, you need three ingredients. The first ingredient is to find a realistic potential that will reproduce the properties that you are looking for, set the boundary condition, periodic, a periodic mixture, it depends on the phenomenon, and setting what we call the working uh, ensemble. Okay, well, now, if you want uh, to model, let's say, radiation effects, you have mainly two different ways to do this. Either you use molecular, uh, classical, classical molecular dynamics uh, with what we call PKA, primary knocking atoms method, but you know this 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 approach has a drawback, which is no electronic effects are included since it's purely classical. Well, there is another approach where we can use what we call a Benicio simulation uh, with what we, what is known as TDDFT to de, to to define what we call um, excited states. But you know this 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 method also has a drawback, which is the size so and it's time consuming so using using abinichu is nice but the drawback is you cannot exceed some hundreds of atoms but well for our for our investigation we we'll use let's say hybrid method where we model the ions i will uh, model the ions with molecular dynamics and the electrons with the free electronic gas and this algorithm or scheme is called ttm for two temperature model molecular dynamic approach Okay. Well, uh, for let's say a few words about this TTM MD model approach. You know, for the ions, it's very simple. We integrate Newton equations of motions. You can see over here, and this is the equation that will govern the behavior of 
our ions. Okay, here is the potential that we talk about. So here is the potential we inject. Here is the force launch van force for the local heating, and here PE is the atomic uh, is the electronic pressure in fact of your free uh, of, of 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 the electrons. Okay, well, uh, but the uh, the electrons or the free electron gas is modeled, but what we call electron thermal diffusion equation. What we can see here. Okay, so this is the source term. I is means it deals with the fluence or the absorbent intensity. Lb is the uh, the optical penetration depth of your laser. Gp is electron permanent interaction. Kappa e is electron uh, ele ele electrical thermal uh, conductivity, and C is the electronic specific heat. Well, if you want more details about this, I advise you to read this four nice uh, article to have more details if you want. Okay. Well, let's talk a bit about the simulation setup. The simulation setup is as follow. Well, for the, the first of all, that you should know, there is a thing that you should know that laser is applied in the X directions. Okay. And here is the surface. So uh, we have free surface on the, on the top and the rear of your materials. Okay. We have here the electronic meshing grid. Okay. Where we are going to solve this equation that I talked about. Okay, well, and our the whole system is actually divided to two regions, TTM MD region and Norris Lichten boundary region. Why? Because you know when you put your energy dose on the surface, you will create you will apply gradient of temperature and we create a wave pressure. And to avoid this wave pressure to go to come to come and be reflected uh, by the rear surface, in fact, you have to attenuate it in this region, in fact. So Concretely speaking, this North Lichten boundary condition will play the role of the bulk, in fact, to attenuate this wave pressure. And you know, uh, the electrons, in fact, are are in each each mesh grid here, and the ions and electrons talk to each other by the mean of electrons ions coupling factor. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's start the first part. So it's femtosecond laser interaction with B two and with with B two structure. The B two structure is. Crystallographically speaking, is as follow is a BCC, and instead of having in the central here is central atom as copper is zirconium, in fact. So is a, a BCC structure. Okay. Well, here I presented the first result that uh, that you have gotten to compute. You know, to manage this simulation, you have to 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 compute these three parameters: CE, kappa E, and GP. So there are two two main ways to do it. The first way is a Benici simulation, as we did it here using a Benici software. Okay, or you can use if you want experimental data if they are available. And to inject the electronic specific heat in our model, we will use this equation over here. You fit this curve, this Benici curve here. Look at that. You can see with this equation. And once we fit it, we just collect C0, I0, I1, A2. And we'll inject them in the script and we got the results. And for the other properties, you can just use this, the, the, these equations, in fact. Okay. Well, this is the first simulation that we manage. As you can see it here, the time is in picoseconds. Okay, so 1, 100, 140, et cetera, picoseconds. Here we will have the formation of liquid state on the surface, which is normal. And what but what is interesting, in fact, is what happened here in the zoom region. Okay. Well, well, the, well. The first notice, the first thing that we can notice is the emergence of two new phases, the FCC and the HCP in this uh, BCC matrix. Okay, okay. And there is another stuff that I want to mention that there is no segregation effect. It means that in the same HCP, for example, this is plane, you can find uh, both uh, copper and zirconium atoms. Okay, well, let's go deeper in the analysis and see what is happening. So, what we have noticed is the formation of, let's say, four zones. Why I am saying these four zones? Because I divided them according to what we call the twinning, the twinning plane direction. So, we have identified uh, the following, the following directions, orientation, if you want, minus one zero one and one zero one, which belongs to the same family. Okay, and this one zero zero. Uh, twinning direction, and our prediction was correct uh, because you compared with this paper published by Sutraka. Hope that I spelled it correctly. Okay, so that's it. What you can see so far. So, 
actually we have phase trans transformation from BCC to HCP in um, by a twinning planes, in fact, by formation of twinning planes. But well, let's now zoom in the first region and see what the structure is. Okay, because maybe I will tell you it's twinning. Maybe you want you want you want you, you will say okay, I um, can't see it. So let's go deeper and zoom if you want. Okay, so what you can see in this first region here, we have the red planes, which represent the twinning planes actually over here, and it's the finger and these step, these steps, in fact, are the fingerprints of the twin planes formation. And here you can see the atomic row over here, which represent the coherent boundary. Why I'm saying the coherent boundary is because according to the, the literature. Uh, the the a the a the a correspond exactly to our case, so there is no mismatch between between the two rows, and it's like a mirror effect. Okay, so we have ACP phase twinning planes, twinning planes in different directions, and they are coherent. Okay, well, uh, the second exercise that we will do, or we did, is we double now the fluence and we double also uh, the size of our system. And and see and see what's happening. In fact, so the first thing that we can see is the formation of cavitation on the surface when we double the fluence, and no, not only uh, because we have the emergence of a new phase, which will be dominant in this case, and it's the FCC. In fact, so just to resume, we just change, we just change uh, laser conditions, and FCC becomes more dominant than the HCP. This is the idea. So in this case, we don't have the HCP twinning, but we have the FCC twinning formation, okay? And to understand this formation, we just, just over here on the right present, which is known as classical theory of nucleation, in fact. So we have formation of small clusters, and they will grow and grow and will form planes, okay? And this is heterogeneous because, because, because we, don't, we don't have this uh, for, for front of crystallization. Okay, this is what characterizes the homogeneous transformation. Okay, now let's start the second part of femtosecond laser interaction with uh, amorphous copper zirconium uh, system. So the first thing to do is to produce your amorphous state, and uh, to do that, we use just we try to mimic what we call uh, experimental protocol. So we take our first uh, uh, crystal seed and. We, we, we will minimize it by what we call uh, conjugate gradient approach. For those who did a bit molecular dynamics, they know uh, about what I'm talking. Okay. And then once we did this, we just hit, annihilate, and quench. And this is the exercise which is very important. You quench very fast and you have your initial structure. And this structure will multiply it in space. I will use it as input for laser metallic glass interactions. Okay. And here, what we did, we, 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 we explored uh, four, four different fluences, okay, regime, if you want. And you can see here a formation on the metallic glass on the surface of the meeting front, okay. And uh, here we have the, the, ablation, uh, the ablation regime. But which is interesting is this, the, the, the void formation. So, and that's it, okay, that's it. So. What, uh, what am I saying to you so far? So the phase, trans the phase transition in the B2 structure is due to the presence of a wave pressure propagation, okay? The deformation is a plastic event dominant by the existence of twins, and those twins are, have different orientation, different composition, depending on the laser properties, and the evolution we have seen so far in uh, the metallic glasses uh, are the void formation. And I think I'm done with my presentation. So thank you for your attention. And the more questions you ask, the happier I am. Thank you very much.